When it comes to camera control at mid-journey, the first thing we have to consider is the direction that we're viewing the subject from. The centered view puts us right in front of the person so that we're looking at them directly. It keeps the face symmetric and gives a clear and focused view of the subject. If we rotate the camera 90 degrees, we have the side profile shot. It's a different perspective that emphasizes the silhouette of the face with the shape of the nose, lips, jawline, and other defining features. Turning them another 90 degrees and we got the back view. This is one of my favorites because of the mystery it shows in the image. We can't see the person's face, so we have to guess what they look like and what their facial expressions are based on the other context in the image. In between the centered view and the side profile view is the three-quarter profile view. It's a bit more natural compared to a straight-on portrait and adds some extra depth to the person's face. Then we have the back view three-quarter profile shot, which avoids completely hiding the face, like the back view, and shows more curves in the neck and shoulder area. Trial each of these different directions as they all set their own perspective on the scene. The next component of camera control is the shot type. You can think of this as how far away the camera is from the subject. The close-up shot puts you up close and intimate with the subject and shows the head and neck area. It tends to emphasize specific facial features like the eyes, nose, and lips, and it's great for showing different facial expressions. Zoom out a bit more for the medium close-up shot, where the subject is framed from the chest up. It's not as close as a close-up, but we can still see the facial details. Let's get really close. Extreme close-ups highlight a really small portion of the subject. I'm showing the eyes here, but you can use this to showcase anything else like the hands or textures and fabric of the clothing. Remember that we don't have to stick with just human subjects. Extreme close-up shots are great for animals too. This photo of an owl shows the intensity that you can get when you focus in on the eyes. Let's move back a bit. Medium shots frame the subject from the waist up. We can see much more of the environment now and have a sense of what our subject's full figure looks like. The cowboy shot gets its name from western films where the image is framed from the knees up, so we can see the holster and revolver, which would normally be around the waist, but it's also great for other portraits. Take a couple more steps back and we see the entire figure from head to toe. The full body shot will display the entire figure, or maybe not. Midjourney struggles to generate full body shots in general. I get asked a lot of questions about this. A cool trick I learned is you can prompt for the type of shoes that the person is wearing, which will tell Midjourney to generate the feet inside the image. Let's try full body shot, back view, photo of a woman in New York, wearing boots, natural lighting 35mm. The key part of the prompt is wearing boots. This should include the feet in the image. And there's a full body shot, exactly like we'd expect. You can also use the pan down feature to get full body shots. As of recording this video, the pan feature isn't in Mid Journey version 6 yet, but it should be added soon enough. So far, we've covered the direction the subject is facing and the shot type. The third major component of camera control is the camera angle. Changing the angle we shoot our photo from can make it much more dynamic and cinematic. The low angle shot moves the camera below eye level and angles upwards looking at the subject from below. It's a lot more dramatic and makes the subject look tall and dominant and in charge of the situation. Adding the keyword extreme to emphasize the camera angle even more. The low angle shot is useful for making both heroes look stronger and villains look more imposing. In the opposite direction is a high angle shot which places the camera above the subject and tilts downwards. It makes a person look smaller and more vulnerable, but it can also be used to isolate the subject and make them pop out from the background. You can show an emotional state of despair and uncertainty. To get the most consistent results, make sure you prompt for low angle shot from below and high angle shot from above. Otherwise, Mid Journey doesn't always know what you're talking about. The wide angle shot captures a broad view of the environment with a wide field of vision. They're great for showcasing the surrounding landscapes. If you use extreme wide angle or long shot, it pulls the camera back even more and shows the scale of the environment compared to the subject and conveys the emotion of solitude. For these images that show more of the background, I'd suggest using a wider aspect ratio of 2 to 1 or even 5 to 2 for extra wide cinematic shots. Now, Mid Journey version 6, all parts of the prompt matter equally compared to the previous versions. 
which means we have to be careful with the way we construct our prompts. For wide angle shots, if you put too many details about the subject in the prompt, like the hair and eye color or the expression on the face, because of the facial details that I asked for, Midjourney won't actually generate a wide angle shot and instead will take a photo that emphasizes the person's face. Instead, we have to use a prompt with less personal details so Midjourney knows we want to include more of the environment instead of focusing on the person. You can go directly above the subject and look down using the overhead view. This top-down perspective gives more context about the ground that otherwise wouldn't be visible, like these shadows from the window on the ground. The bird's eye view flies above the subject and can be used to achieve a similar effect. Alright, we've covered a lot so far, let's review everything and tie it all together. The three key components of camera control are the direction you're viewing the subject from, the shot type or how far away you are from the subject, and the camera angle. We can mix and match between these to get some really cool photos. Let's try viewing our subject from the side with a full body shot and wide angle lens. I always like these city lights type of photos. Now let's try a centered view close up shot and let's also put the camera below and point upwards with the low angle shot. The perspective on the buildings out of focus in the background looks really dynamic and also realistic. Midjourney has really stepped up their game here. Finally, let's move behind our subject, use the wide angle shot, but also combine that with a low angle viewpoint so we're looking up. Always remember to try out wide aspect ratios for wide angle shots. We've covered the fundamentals, but there's a couple more camera angles we can use. The Dutch angle shot, or tilted angle shots, theoretically should tilt the camera and produce a disorienting type of image. But in my test, I found this to be pretty inconsistent, and most of the time mid-journey doesn't actually tilt the camera. The point of view shot shoots the image from a first person perspective. It's an immersive camera shot that puts you in the subject's shoes and is especially good for action photography or adventurous photos. Everyone knows about the selfies. They're not as popular anymore, but you still see a lot of them on social media. You can combine these with the camera angles I talked about earlier, like using a selfie and a high angle shot for extra dynamic effects. The camera lens you use can make a big difference in the way that your photo looks. We've already covered wide angle lens, which are used for wide angle shots. Fisheye lens are ultra wide angle lens with an extreme field of view that creates these distorted spherical looking images that get more curved as you approach the edges of the photo. It's not suitable for most cases, but it does make your photos feel more immersive. If you want highly detailed photos, try out the macro lens, which are specifically designed for close-up shots. You can use them for portraits of people, but wildlife photography also looks really nice with these. One of my favorites is tilt shift lens, which creates these miniature toy-like effect in photos. It's perfect for natural landscapes, but can be used for cities as well. Most of the concepts I've covered also apply to landscapes. Try overhead view, bird's eye view, or aerial shots to point down at the subject from the sky. The elevated viewpoints lets you see much more than you could standing on the ground and shows the natural beauty of the entire environment. The satellite shot flies you even further up in the sky and makes the people on this beach look tiny. Try ground level shots to get all the way on the ground and get photos taken with the cameras placed on the ground. This emphasizes the foreground like the texture of this road in Utah or these flowers in a forest. Point the camera back up with low angle shots like you're an explorer lost in the jungle or climbing the Great Wall. These shots pointing up show the huge size of the landscape compared to you. Panoramic shots are created by stitching together multiple images. They have an extremely wide field of view and make the landscape look huge and expansive. They're a perfect starting point for getting into AI landscape photography. If you want more prompt guides and mid-journey tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe. And if this video was helpful, you also like my cinematic prompt guide where I talk about camera angles, lighting, color grading, and much more.